What is going on everybody, this is John here of Wish Computer YouTube and welcome to the first ever video in the GTA 4 C Sharp scripting tutorials and yes, we are going to create C Sharp scripts for GTA 4 to mod GTA 4 and I know GTA 5 is coming out pretty soon for the PC but I decided to make a video tutorial series on this topic because there is not a single video in English that explains how to do that and this, um, I don't know yeah, this script hook that you will need to um, create scripts in C Sharp has been around for six years now, and there's not a single video except a Russian tutorial series that I obviously do not understand, and most of you won't understand that either. But if you're Russian, then you can go and check that out. But anyways, um, I just decided to make a tutorial series on this because it's such a great thing, and Hazard X, the creator of this GTA4.net script, really deserves a lot of credit for this because this is such a great thing. When I first saw this, I was like, oh my god, yeah, I can write scripts using C Sharp, my favorite language, oh my god. Yeah, anyways, that was probably not even close, but um, you got the point. Um, I really, really like C Sharp, and I've been developing a um, project with C Sharp for, I think, over six years now, and it's just really an awesome language, and that's why I really like his .NET script hook. So, full credits to him. Really awesome guy, and apparently he keeps updating this project. So last update was 21st of August 2014, which is quite amazing actually, considering how many years have passed by, have gone by. Um, but yeah, that's absolutely great. So what you want to do, you obviously need GTA 4, a full installation of GTA 4. Um, I recently purchased GTA 4 on the Steam sale. It was, it was like about I don't know, 13 dollars or something. Can't quite remember, but something around that, and it's really really great, really cheap and you basically need your GTA 4 installation folder as well because what you need to do is you need to go to the installation folder and put in all the mods you need in order to run GTA 4 C Sharp scripts. Yeah. Okay, now what you want to do first, you're going to need a bunch of different files and all of these files are going to be in the description of the video so you don't even have to look at this link up here to you know type that in your own browser. You can just go to the description of the video and that will be good. So you're going to need to go to this website right here, which is Hazard Access website, and you need to download the latest version right here. Just click on that, and then you're going to have a library, and you also need a, an ASL, an ASI loader. Um, that's a, an ASL. Oh my god, this is so bad. <laughs> Freaking tongue twister. Okay, you need an ice eye loader by X Alexander Blade. Oh god, this is so terrible. But yeah, this is this person, Alexander Blade, is also a really well known modder in the GTA Forms community. He's been on this website for well, <laughs> a long time, nine years or so. So that's absolutely crazy as well. Um and yeah, that is pretty much that. Um, so once you've downloaded both of these archives, I will try to see if I have them in my freaking downloads folder. I do not have them in my downloads folder because I've created another folder called GTA 4 Modding. And you're basically going to have these two archives in your downloads folder. And I just created another folder in my desktop called GTA 4 Modding to make things a little bit more organized. And you should do that as well, by the way. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, because this is the easiest part, is using or installing the ASI loader. So just go to this archive and you need WinRA or 7zip or something to extract this archive, obviously. Um, and then you're going to get a bunch of different files, but you do not need the README um, or the yeah web pages. Yeah, if you're interested in OpenV, which is another great tool by Alexander Blade, then you can definitely ta uh, check that out. Um, but I don't need that, so I want to keep things a little more organized. And what the fuck happened? Wow. Oh my god. Virus. Wow. That is absolutely awesome. Never seen that before. Uh, oh, that worked well. Never mind. I think I just... Hmm. Okay. That was quite bad. <laughs> Never mind. So, now we only need the dsound.gl file. And now you need to find your GTA 4 um, installation folder. So I have the Steam version, and if you do have the Steam version as well, then you can simply go to this PC, local disk, program files, x86, and then find the Steam folder, and that is right here. Then uh, find Steam apps, go to common, go to Grand Theft Auto 4, GTA 4, and now you are in, this, uh, in the 
initial directory of the GTA 4 installation. And now what you want to do, you're just going to drag and drop this dsound DLL in your installation folder. If you've already installed other mods in GTA 4, then you will have this file already there, so just replace it, or, well, just keep your original file, it doesn't really matter, because any ASI loader will do. And that's that. So once you've done that, it's great. Um, you're going to extract this scripthook.net um, archive, and we basically need a couple of things, so uh, you can actually read, read me, there's like a disclaimer, description, and installation manual, and things like that. Um, then that's totally fine. But we basically need the scripthook.dll, scripthook.net.asi file, and the scripts folder. But in the scripts folder, you can see, um, you can put your .NET scripts in here, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to um, put the scripts folder into our GTA 4 directory, and then we can put every single script we have into that directory, and we will be good to go it says for developers right here and since we are developers um, you want to open up that directory and you can see there are some test scripts and all that and you can take a look at them if you want to because that's pretty much all the stuff that um, Hazard X created already for us so we can take a look at some of the methods that he uses in these scripts and how to achieve different things using the different methods and classes and so on that is built into the GTA 4 script hook.net yeah. But the most important part is going to this bin directory and copying the scripthook.net.dll. Just copy that, then go back to your initial directory, and then paste that in here. So it's next to this .net and scripthook.dll. Now in the scripts folder, we can delete this for developers folder. We don't need that anymore. I mean, unless you want to, of course, uh, look at the scripts that Hazard created. Um, I'll just wait a second because it's not disappearing okay here we go alright now what you want to do you want to I don't know keep this somewhere else or make sure you don't delete this or anything but you don't need this right now this is actually the reference library we're going to need once we start building the scripts and coding the scripts but we need scriptbook.net.asi file the scriptbook.dll file and the scripts folder and just drag and drop them into your GTA 4 directory as well and then you're good to go you all set up for um, scripting, which is quite nice. So I'm just going to get rid of all these to keep things a little organized, as I like to do. Um, and now we are good to go. We have our scripthook.net.dll, which is of course quite important. And keep your GTA 4 directory open for now, because we might need that. And actually open up the scripts folder, and you're good. And actually, one thing we can do as well, just copy this path up here. Just copy that. And then you can close it if you want to. But just keep it open. And now the final download you have to do is actually Microsoft Visual Studio 2013 Express version. Now I have the professional version because I use some of my applications commercially, so that's why I need this professional version and of course sell some of my applications. And yeah, but you can go with the Express version, no problem. It's for free and really it's an awesome tool. It's actually an RDE, an integrated development environment that basically provides all of the tools that are required to um, build applications and libraries and things like that. And it's really well organized. And it's my favorite IDE of all time, so <laughs> definitely download it. So what you want to do, once you open up Professional uh, Visual, uh, Visual Studio Express for the first time, you're going to see this start page right here, and that's totally fine. So what you want to do, you want to go to start a new project, and now we're going to get to actually using that. So on the left here, you're going to go to Installed, then go to Templates, then go to Visual C Sharp, and then in Visual C Sharp, uh, Visual C Sharp. Wow, all those tongue twisters today. You're going to need to find um, your a class library right here. Now what you're going to do, you can give it pretty much any name you want, but I'm just going to call it Hello World because that's, you know, kind of the most common name for your first application or whatever first thing that you do programming related. And then it's really important, whatever name you have, you always have to add a .NET. Now you could rename the file this entire class library or the, the uh, Visual Studio creates afterwards, but you don't really want to do that. It's really way more convenient if you just do it right away. So, yeah, definitely add a .NET to that. And now hit OK. And now it's going to create the project. And that was quite fast. So the first thing we're going to do, and by the way, guys, if you do not know C Sharp, or if you don't know 
Java, then this tutorial really isn't for you. You have to learn C Sharp first. If you come from a Java background, the syntax is quite similar to C Sharp, so you will be able to, I don't know, create some scripts without knowing C Sharp technically, because like this language really is quite similar, so that shouldn't really be a problem. But once you know C Sharp, return to this video and we can get started. So first things first, we are going to get rid of all these using statements. We do not need them. And now since it looks a little more cleaner, more clean, wow, more cleaner, great. Um, we have this class right here and we're going to rename that as well. So just rename that. And we're going to call that, um, no, let me think of a good name, main, no, okay, I'm not going to do that. Hello world or something. You can just call it hello world. You can pretty much call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter at all. But it cannot be the same name as the namespace, obviously. Or well, it can actually. I think it can. Oh, I'm not too sure. But just call it something else, and you will be good. Um, now, what you want to do? You have this solution explorer right here. If you do not have the solution explorer, go to view, and then go to solution explorer up here, and you will find a solution explorer panel, and you can also drag that around. Just put it in. Yeah put it here somewhere and you will be good to go and also you need the properties so you can go to um, other windows and property manager should be just that okay now you can see all your references and those are basically all the references you have in your project and that is quite nice but what we want to do you can go to add, uh, references right click that and then click add reference then first go to assemblies and then it says search assemblies so you're just going to type in system dot windows uh, now you have to type that windows dot forms here we go this is exactly what we want and just tick that and hit OK and now we need to add another reference which is of course a reference to our scriptchuck.net as you can see I'm already um, in my GTA 4 modding folder so this is the file we need and just hit add and then OK Perfect. But now one important step as well is so you need to click on the scripthook.net reference and then in your properties um, panel you will see copy local and now just double click on that true and then this will change to false. You can also use this arrow because this is a boolean of course but we do not want to copy the scripthook.net to where we output our project. That's quite important because that could cause some issues but most likely not because it doesn't have the right extension but really it's quite redundant to copy that locally so just get rid of that okay now we're gonna get to the actual coding first off we need some using statements so using GTA GTA namespace is pretty much where all of our classes and things like that are stored so you definitely need that and now we're going to use the system.windows.forms as well system.windows.forms and of course you're probably going to ask yourself, if you're uh, familiar with C Sharp, then you're going to ask yourself, why do we need Windows Forms? Well, simply because there is this keys enum that we need if you want to bind um, a key to an action or method. So, and this is what we want to do. So, what we essentially want to create, we want to, whenever we press F2, we want to display a message. Okay, so you can use any other key you want, and I will show, um, showcase that in a second. But yeah, we're going to need to go into our class, and first off, we need to create a constructor. That is going to be called um, right at the start, when our plugin is loaded. And just no arguments. Um, and now what we want to do, we want to bind uh, a certain key to a certain action. But before we do that, we need to create that method, so a private void. And this is going to be called display message. Oh, you know what? We're going to call this say hello. And you can call that whatever you want, obviously. Um, and now what we're going to do, we're going to type in bind key. Well, it doesn't exist. That's simply because we need to go to our public class right here, and we need to inherit from the script class that is stored in the GTA namespace. And now we can use all of the different methods and classes and so on. What we want to do, we're going to type in bind key. And now it works, as you can see. And now we have to specify a key. That's why we need the system.windows.forms namespace. And now, yeah, F2. That's already correct. So keys.f2 and then comma. And then we need a delegate. So you key press delegate. And then we need the target method. And that is going to be say hello. 
and that's it. Really, really simple, as you can see. And now all we have to do is we have to spec uh, we have to refer to the game class, and then there's this method called display text, and then we can simply, yeah, pass through a string, and that's all. So now we can type in hello world because that's what you usually do, and then hello world, um, my first C sharp script. Okay, that's cool. All right, now save the project, and now to the last very important part, we're going to go to properties and uh, just double click properties, double click, yeah, now, <laughs> thank you, um, and now go to build. And by the way, if you messed up the .NET extension that you have, pretty much, then you can put that in here as well. But put that on the assembly name, not the namespace or anything. Just put that on the assembly name, and you will be good to go. Now go to build. And then you have your output path right here. And remember that we copied the path to our scripts folder in the GTA 4 installation directory? Yeah, you do remember that, of course. So we can just paste that into the output path. And as you can see, this works beautifully. And now just save it, Control and S, or just save it up here. And you can close that properties window. And now we can simply go to build a build solution, or you can just simply press F6. You should get used to the um, key, the, the shortcuts, because it's really, really convenient. But yeah, that's pretty much everything. That's, that's it. It's really cool. So it's really, really simple. And in the future, we are going to create so many awesome scripts, guys. Um, and now you will see what it looks like and what our okay, script can so do. we are now in GTA 4. And pretty much what I wanted to tell you as well was that you can edit these scripts in real time, which is absolutely way. amazing. Um, so... You can basically make changes to your scripts, and then all you need to do is go to the console up here. So there's actually this little wave above the tab key, and that's the console key. So um, that's quite nice, and what you need to type in now is just type in reload scripts. And what this is going to do, it's going to reload all of the scripts that you are currently running. Um, in your, on, in your GTA 4 game and that is really amazing because now all the changes are going to be made automatically so you do not need to reboot the game or anything like that and when we press the F2 key now as you can see hello world my first two sharp script and I just realized that this is also clip capture which means that you should probably choose another key but yeah just press F2 and as you see hello, my, uh, hello world my first two sharp script we can spam this I guess and yeah, so it's beautiful guys. So thank you very, very much for watching this video guys. If you're new then please subscribe to my channel and like this video if you enjoyed it. And I hope that we can create some awesome scripts in the future. I definitely plan on continuing with this series. So like this video and give me some feedback in the comments as well guys. It's much appreciated. So thank you and see you in another tutorial.